Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to today's WeConnect International webinar. My name is Maggie Berry, and I'm the Executive Director for WeConnect International here in Europe, and I'm delighted that you've joined us for today's webinar, Building Resilience, Maximising Digital Opportunities. Our presenter today is Noreen Cesario, Market Access, and um, they are a WeConnect International Certified Women's Business Enterprise. And in this session, Noreen is going to be addressing what you need to consider in order to adapt to the new digital environment, to maximize the advantages of digitalization and digital tools, and to build resilience in your business. Um, to keep background noise to minimum, um, if we could just have everybody to keep themselves on mute, and please do use the chat functionality for any questions. Um, Noreen's going to talk maybe for about 40 to 45 minutes, um, and there will be time for questions at the end. We are recording it, so you will be able to listen back. <laughs> so much for presenting first today the floor is yours and it's over to you thank you maggie i think that timing was perfect as well so hi everyone my name is noreen barros Chasario, and i am a strategic marketing communications and trade specialist i run a thought leadership strategic marketing and communications advisory firm and we work with businesses to help you understand your markets and customers find your voice and engage with your customers efficiently and effectively Early at the start of a pandemic, we were already, as a business, advising clients and partners about the importance of being digital to weather the COVID-19 storms. We've participated in discussions, we've held webinars, we've consulted, and we've advised on low-cost, quick-win pivots to move to digital. Six months on, the message is much clearer for many SMEs. Digital is here to stay. Many a tech laggard has been forced to download applications such as Zoom and WhatsApp and Slack to engage, message and work together as remote teams. Businesses have pivoted, many taking their offerings online. This is merely the start though, not the end of our journey. Even before COVID-19 hit us at the end of last year, SMEs were being advised to go digital. Why? It levels the playing field in terms of reach. It allows for cost savings through improved and automated processes. And it is a platform for new products and services, giving us global reach. In the next 40 or so minutes, I invite you to join me on a quick walk in our new reality. We will not cover everything, but I hope to sow enough evidence-backed thoughts to help you on your journey to maximize digital opportunities. As Maggie said, I prefer to take questions after my talk, and I'm also happy to continue the conversation individually with anyone who wants to connect either via LinkedIn, social media, or directly via email. And please don't forget about the chat function and also uh, the Q&A. We have all heard that the pandemic crisis has accelerated the adoption of new technology globally in a way that was unprecedented just a year ago. From an inflexibility for online conferencing to push back on online recording, we've all been through this with our clients and with corporates. In fact, research has shown that COVID-19 has created almost three years of innovation in just three months. It's gone beyond the ubiquitous Zoom boom. I love that. It has changed quickly, quickly, and is a trend that is reaching far beyond this Zoom boom. In the UK, the rates of technological adoption and penetration by SMEs are very low by international standards. A report just re released by Be The Business showed that while what they term as the upper tail companies are fast adopters of new technology, many like us, small to medium sized enterprises are lagging behind with technology adoption being slow or probably non-existent. There are many reasons, uh, including inconsistent internet connectivity and poor infrastructure for SMEs to get online. However, apart from these national challenges, the majority of SMEs lack the resources, the skills and the capacity to adopt technology easily or at scale. From those that did adopt, only 29% of SMEs are actually using virtual collaboration software and 25% invested in cloud-based back office systems and CRM. If I am using any terminology which you're not familiar, feel free to add this in the chat as well. So that sudden change where we went into lockdown six months ago, the changes in business practices and the acute restrictions in tradings because of national lockdown and forced lockdowns is actually pushing us to adopt this new technology. On the upside, it is also pushing us to experience the potential to reform and transform. 
This has created a new appetite to try the technology. It's a once in a generation opportunity to close these ga the gap and capture the potential revenue and growth we are beginning to imagine. It is actually ours to take or throw away. Let us quickly run through the known opportunities and benefits for SMEs using technology. Last year, Deloitte undertook a study in the US to see how SMEs were adopting digital tools and whether this adoption improved performance and allowed them to remain competitive in our fast moving, more digitalized and global economy, where customers are connected at all times and expect a seamless digital interaction that is accessible and responsive. For those of you who still are wondering what digital refers to exactly, digital covers the tools that are services, platforms and marketplaces, whereas businesses, we can use it for marketing and communicating with customers. We can use it to manage our internal processes and logistics, and we can actually execute sales and payments. And this would include the email, the website, the social media, the online payment systems, the e-commerce, real-time chat, cloud-based software, there's a number of them and I will touch on them. So the findings said that SMEs are actually aware of the importance of digitalization. We all tend to use some form of digital tools and have noted improved business performance. And actually 99% of all SMEs appear to at least use one tool, even if that is email. However, not all of them are using it with the same intensity. The survey classified SMEs into four stages of digital journey, and this is what you're actually seeing on screen now. 60% having a basic or intermediate level of digital engagement, and 40% having a higher or more advanced use of digital tools. 85% confirm that the digital tools they are using have helped their business in some way, particularly in four key areas, the customer journey, financial performance, jobs, and innovation. The underlying thread was that SMEs with higher levels of digital engagement do indeed enjoy superior business performance to those with lower or more basic digital engagement, and this isn't anything new. As you can see, as the results showed, over 90% of all SMEs were using digital tools for communication, including email, online presence, online direction, directories, company websites, proprietary mobile apps, partnership with third party sites, blogs, and social media. These 80% were using these tools to improve business processes and productivity, and have included cloud-based software, enterprise resource planning, or ERP, corporate social networks and messaging tools. And these were proprietary or third party, such as Slack, WhatsApp, and customer relation management or CRM software. From these 40% using the digital tools for sales management or to support the sales function by facilitating bookings and purchases through online channels, such as the company's own website and or the use of third party e-commerce platforms have also seen results. 40% were selling the products via the website or the third party app, and these could be the PayPal or Slack, uh, sorry, um, other systems that we have tied into our websites and 40% use an actual online store where it's all inbuilt. A third have a website to sell their products and services, manage bookings or place reservations, and one fifth use third party marketplaces. 60% are actually capturing data to get insights from visitors and customers who are interacting with their business online to market their products and services more effectively. What all this shows is that digital is being embraced albeit at different rates. Everyone on this call should feature in these statistics, even if it is just for email communications. Customer growth is probably one of the key benefits of digital. It is also a key driver for business performance. It is interesting to note that 80% of the SMEs in the findings reported that part of their revenue growth was acquisition of new customers in this last year, with more than 40% attributing that to the use of digital tools. In particular, having their own website, using social media and adopting CRM tools. 
And when increasing the use of digital tools for customer engagement, SMEs noted a threefold increase in customer growth, which is uh, on average twice as high. And it isn't just growth in your existing market base. More than half also reported improved and cheaper access to the international market because the reach is now much broader. So much so that SMEs are at a more SMEs that are at a more advanced stage on their digital journey tend to be five times more likely to have a larger reach with international customers than the less digitalized ones. This has not gone unnoticed by the global organizations, and they are trying to uh, promote government to actually fix the national infrastructure. This you can see from Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, the OECD, which is championing digital as a way to facilitate access, um, as well as the World Trade Organization, WTO, and a lot of the other organizations. And this also opens a good way for many women-owned businesses to access markets worldwide and trade more efficiently and profitably. So we can all summarize that the more a business is digitalized, the more it is likely to have a growing customer base, a relatively stronger international dimension and consistent revenue growth. And this too has been evidenced. In 2019, 85% of all the SMEs surveyed noted that the digital tools improved their business profitability. So the more advanced SMEs were twice more profitable than their basic peers, and this was possible because of the higher revenue growth and reduction in operation costs. And that is quite an important point to note because these are tools that we can all adopt. In particular, more than 20% using digital tools reported reducing operating costs as one of the top three benefits from using digital tools. And on average, they attributed one fifth of this reduction to the use of these tools. Let us just say that businesses that are the more advanced stage are also twice more as likely to be expecting to grow. The other area where it was seen was in innovation. Being more accessible and cheaper than before, technology can be harnessed to overcome the structural disadvantages stemming from uh, resource and size constraints. We can use it to strengthen our comparative advantages and improve our overall competitiveness. And we have seen this a lot during COVID-19 as a lot of the companies pivoted our offerings. So where does that leave us and why are we discussing digital today? McKinsey estimated that in the last six months, we have vaulted five years forward in both consumer and business digital adoption. And this was just in a matter literally of weeks. We all speak from firsthand experiences. We have taken stock. We've tried to take long views and plan. We've pivoted. We've joined our customers and consumers as we transitioned because we had to. There was nothing else to do. For many key services, such as financial services, supermarkets, grocery stores, medical services, all of them had to transition in a matter of days and weeks to remote working. Many launched digital re outreach to customers to take orders, have flexible payment arrangements and make remote deliveries. Supermarkets, grocery stores and many other retailers shifted to online ordering and delivery as their primary business from bricks and mortars. And they have all experienced downtime in services as their systems collapsed under the online onslaught of requests. All of a sudden, people who owned a smartphone were inquiring about buying tablets and laptops in order to stream entertainment, get on Zoom calls, facilitate online learnings, order their supplies. Businesses like Amazon had a field day, and we are all now looking at best practice in hindsight. It, it, uh, this talk today comes at a time as we face a longer period of uncertainty. We have to take a really long hard at our business and look for digital opportunities. Education is pivoting to online business learning and digital classrooms. Doctors have begun delivering telemedicine and regulation is also trying to keep pace to allow this to happen. If they can afford it, manufacturers are trying to develop plans for what they're calling light out factories and supply chains, where there's a lot of automated processes rather than needing to have people on site to do them, allowing the human element to work offline. For SME, I know this may sound like light years away, but as the call for improved national infrastructure continues, we are fortunate to be able to find 
and use many of the available automated processes which are with us even now. And if they aren't yet adapted for SME use, it is our call which will give them that push to actually make it more ubiquitous. Let us look at a few industries and see how they are adopting digital channels. This is a snapshot of industries in the US. However, the trend is global. I ask you, how is your industry and market doing? Please feel free to comment in the chat function. What we can see is that customers in B2B and consumers in B2C have changed their information gathering, decision making and purchasing behaviours. I am sure you have all experienced it. They have also changed their preferred way of interacting, adapting a socially distant and re remote way of engaging online. And this has gone towards a more increased use of social media and Slacks and WhatsApps and all the digital tools which are immediate, making it online 24 seven. So it is a fact, the update trend is here to stay. Digital, at least to some degree across the industries is going to become part of a new hybrid way of working. It is also a fact that the 75% of people using digital channels for the first time, and these were the laggards who up to seven months ago would have never been online, indicate that now they will continue to use them even when things go back to normal, whatever that normal is. So if you are not digital today, if you are a digital laggard, you will be substantially disadvantaged in the near future. This is our wake up call. And what this means is that we need to ensure our digital channels are on par with, if not better than those of our competition to succeed in this new environment. It also means that we need to make sure we don't lose customers in the transfer as they change their behaviors. They will be looking for online evidence in terms of quality, trust and market validation. These are behaviours that up to a few months ago, we were evidencing through case studies and testimonials. Websites and testimonials now compete with the trust pilot, the validated reviews and the brand sentiment on social media. Many people have become keyboard advocates and are fast to praise and complain, naming and shaming. I was talking earlier on about McKinsey. McKinsey have identified four main groups on the SME digital journey, and we are all somewhere in this group and journey. 23% uh, said that they are within that basic stage of the digital journey, while, uh, while at the next stage, the intermediate stage, we have a larger percentage, a much smaller group, 70% have a high digital engagement. And the last group is bring up, brings up the rear with a fifth of the SMEs in this advanced stage. I don't wish to read out what you have on screen, but let's suffice to say that the difference between the basic, intermediate and high will vary with the depth of usage of digital tools. And whereas at basic, you are doing a lot of activities being hybrid with, between online and offline. You aren't necessarily using cloud-based software or accepting sales through an e-commerce facility. This obviously tends to increase as you journey throughout this passageway. I would like us here to actually do a quick poll. Where would you place your company? Do you think you are in that basic, intermediate, high or advanced stage? And just to recap, um, Maggie, I will ask you here to put it up. The basic tends to have a low presence online. You may have a website or social media, but probably not both. And you are not really engaging in online forms of marketing, such as advertising or search related advertising. Most of your sales are offline. At the next stage, you will have a website maybe one even with, inter with some level of customer engagement, and you are doing some selling and products from the website. That next group, which is the high digital engagement, more than 70% of you are enjoying a high level of customer interaction online, selling your products and services from the website. And at that last group, you are using cloud-based systems, your, your processes are on ERP and you are truly maximizing the digital tools you have. Please let us take a minute, tell me where you are and submit.
Maggie, sh do we have enough to close it? This is interesting. So we have 69% looking at being intermediate, 19% high, and 13% advanced. That is excellent. At least we have one moved out of that basic group. Maggie, may I ask you to take a screenshot of the poll, please, before we close it? And feel free to close when that is done. Thank you. So, I, I know I'm sowing the seeds of the importance and benefits of maximizing digital among people that are already there. And given that COVID-19 is still with us, I hope you will be thinking of increasing your use of digital. Last year, it was only 70% which were planning to increase that digital use. This year, we don't have the luxury of planning. It is a matter of survival. However, I hear you say there are barriers to adoption and probably the reason a lot of us haven't moved from that intermediate to high or even to advanced is because we are facing a lot of the um, barriers which you can see on screen now. Recent report findings are showing that many SMEs complain a lot of these applications are built for large enterprise, not SME customers, making it harder for us to use them. Also, they are costly and they look complex. And this is at a time when we have stretched finances and resources. You may not have the skills. And also let us not forget the employees who may be resisting the adoption of these systems because many of them see it as impacting their jobs or they are just not skilled to do it. Let us add to this what you see high on the chart, which are the privacy and security concerns, costs with ongoing licenses, insufficient skills, and the limited access to training to get to the system. I'm showing you here a chart which shows the availability of these tools for SMEs, especially in the UK. And I apologize for the people who are um, internationally based and may not have these accessible, but if they are in the UK, I'm assuming they will also be um, uh, accessible internationally. What you are seeing is the availability of the tools for the SMEs. And whereas the pink is showing low, the orange is intermediate and the green is high, they are divided on the main key functions that we'll be needing to actually go digital. And in that first section, there's a lot of um, digital tools we are using in our marketing. Um, there's a lot of the financial management and intelligence, and there's some more green there, although there's a lot of pink at the other end. Whereas uh, for those of us actually with manufacturing or processes, um, the operations side, there still is so much to be done. And this is something that has been acknowledged um, at levels across organizations and governments, and they are actually making monies available to try to get these tools more ubiquitous for all of us to adopt. So notwithstanding, what quick wins can we use to adopt to continue on our journey? Starting from the refreshed company website, which hopefully will be able to cope with more online demand. No longer is a website just an online brochure and many of you are not in that stage as you have shown in the um, poll, which is great, but you may be wanting to looking at how can you add more collaborative tools to the site, uh, including um, more CRM to be able to handle the demand and visits that are coming there. Social media is another quick win, and this is handled either in-house or contracted out, and a lot of the conversations need to be ongoing. So CEO, CEO CRM, listings and directories, none of these will be breaking the banks, but investment in them will make you more efficient, adding to your bottom line and competitivity. Where do we go now? We have spent, myself, our customers, and a lot of us all included, long waking hours online. In terms of, we, a lot of us have already migrated. Um, some of us more than others. Let us just recap, that's the catchphrase of the day, as we mentioned earlier, was you are muted, put your camera on, or more depressingly, I'm zoomed out at the end of the day. So depending on budgets, you are already looking at adding to that digital toolkit, paying for projects and applications to improve your digital outputs, whether they are improved CRM, adding more to your website, 
in um, investing in advertising data, which is really one of the key areas you need to look at analytics and potentially even considering basic AI, especially if it's something that can be automated within your process. So where do we go next? The first place is to start a strategic review that actually looks at your markets, your customers, and the relevance and effectiveness of your existing offer in an online marketplace. Segmentation is more important than ever. This is the mantra, it has never changed. Know your customer has to be top of your list. It is back to basics, understanding the value chain, using looking at your user flows, and here also, breaking down your customer journeys, which have changed because of the last six to seven months. As we have said, we are all now digital consumers and customers, and that has changed the way we gather information, the way we evidence it, and the way we actually look to um, engage when we're buying. So we need to be able to understand how we can improve on this and selectively modernize the technology capabilities to boost the speed with which we're going to develop, operate, and deliver our offer. And we need to consider also upskilling ourselves and the teams to become agile even more quickly. I've mentioned, I've mentioned two key concepts today, value chain and customer journeys. These are strategic approaches and tools which are vital to understanding how and where you can digitalize without compromising your business resilience and your markets. They are strategic projects in themselves, and we're not going to go into detail here because they would take all of our time. However, let us say your headlines need to focus on how you develop your offer, how you market it, how you deliver and sell it, and how you maintain your after-sales service. Mapping that user and customer journey is looking at every touch point, be it for information gathering, decision making, purchasing, and after-sales. If you need help, speak to us and we can work with you to identify, to identify this value chain, map your customer journey and also your market map. A large part of this exercise is staying on top of market changes and understanding what is evolving in your customers' information gathering, decision making, buying behaviours and usage patterns. You do need to add into this equation transparency, trust and the equity you are developing for your brand and offer. The digital customer journey is an online experience that can be as digital as your budget allows. And I know that many of us may not have the same amount of budgets available to look at this, but I am going to touch on a few of what we're seeing as trends coming out. So this year, there has been quite a lot of investments in all sorts of the digitalization of the customer journey. AI has developed within the customer service space. We have all experienced the social messaging that is coming out alongside AI and chatbots. This is the easiest form of AI. You can personalize them to fit your brand voice and create an experience that is responsive. On screen, you can see something, and I don't want to just mention one brand, but we are all used to yelling out to this little box in front of us to connect us or tell us the time or do our shopping for us now. Social messaging is also merging with this so that we get the best of the traditional digital customer service, service channel, including full chat functionality, persistent consumer identity across sites. And we've seen this when we're actually shopping even for clothes and you can start your journey on social media, transfer onto the website and then finish it off. And the mobile notifications, when you walk into a shop and tell you, you can have your 10% discount if you are here. AI ensures that customers have that easier, more seamless, more convenient, more personalized and faster shopping experience. This may seem light years for all of you, but it is there. And in time, it's also probably going to become ubiquitous enough that we can buy into it as smaller companies. The voice commerce is coming of age and we're seeing that. As I said, um, we've all experimented with the box that speaks back to us and I'm not going to mention brand names. Even our lighting and heating is part of this new ecosystem, and it seems to be having a strong rate of adoption with a lot of companies actually partnering with them. So size doesn't necessarily matter if you have a service that can actually be automated and put on it. 
even a mail order company and another one, um, and once again, I'm not going to mention a brand name, have utilized Assistant to create the voice shopping experience that allows people to reserve their product and collect it at their local store. What all this has done, it has turned us into hyper-personalized customers. We expect it now because we're beginning to experience it. As I said, we've, we've seen this happen with a lot of department stores, even when we're trying on clothing, where now I can go online, try it, see what it, whether it looks good on me or not, and order it. I can do it with color for my hair. I can do it with spectacles. It is here. It is very much here. There's also more bots, robots available to assist the business and the consumers. And we are seeing this in education and training. We are also seeing this in employee training, where a lot of it is shifting to the online portals and collaboration tools. Overall, employees are getting to be more engaged in the digital experience. And I'm sure a lot of you that have groups that you're working with and that have actually migrated to this channel are seeing the response. As we mentioned, consumers will value transparency more than ever. I cannot stress the level of importance on transparency, trust and equity in the brand. They want brands to be honest and authentic. They want them to be friendly in the communications, even on social media. So it's good to develop the brand voice, communicate in that brand voice and actually be accessible. Because if, if people see that you don't wish to respond, they may stop corresponding or engaging with you. Consumers are quick to pounce on secrecy or abuse of their privacy. Mistakes have been made and consumers expect you to own up and make amends as soon as possible. GDPR is the golden standard. It creates trust, so we must adopt it. The brands with the larger purses are using predictive analytics to create an impact. A lot of the tools analyzing data are actually within that higher band of costings, unfortunately. A lot of um, streaming systems, entertainment, make use of this, and they collect the data relating to our browsing patterns, the shows we watch, the music we hear, the time we spend on them, and then they actually lead into an uber personalized recommendation on what we should be show seeing, buying, or actually watching. There is overall a larger focus on omnichannel delivery. And this is where we start interacting on social media. It could be on Twitter, on Facebook, on uh, Instagram. And then from there, they take you to the website or you actually finish off that purchase on social media itself. We've all done it. Now we expect it. We expect to be able to move into that mobile app or a website. And that I will mention <laughs> augmented reality. It is another digitalization trend, mostly used by the larger brands. It will become ubiquitous down the line. It is probably not at the moment. So leaving you with a few strategies that we can actually use at the moment, I would tell you to optimize for being lean. We need to be able to survive these next few weeks, months, as COVID still affects us and our markets are changing. So we need to focus our thinking. We need to move towards accelerated decision making and be agile enough to drive that rapid execution. We need to be able to marshal our resources and actually look for the strategic investments if you're making any that will actually reap immediate benefits for you to advance into new market opportunities. And you must look for where you can move into new market opportunities because the markets are changing. Be bold and maintain your course. We need to continue to reallocate what we are doing with our resources and grow critical capabilities to determine how and where our customers are shifting their spend. Needless to say, we need to navigate the new now and you should lead with purpose. Your brands should also incorporate what we're terming socially responsible messages that we are playing out in real life. Don't be afraid to own it. Brands that have contributed, that are authentic, and that where they have contribute, contributed is on brand, have a positive and long lasting impact on consumers and customers. And our very own employees will boost that brand equity. There are many examples of businesses that have stepped up and we all know who they are and we all recognize them. So I tell you to take care of your employees and customers and supply chain and stakeholders. Safeguard their well being, connect, collaborate. Small gestures go a long way. 
Also, make sure that you are looking after your cash reserves at this time. Cash is king still. We are facing sharp declines in demand, and this may last a while. That's why we need to be strategic, and we need to look for tools that can improve our processes and manage the many marketing tools we have available, from the value in the offer to pricing, marketing spend efficiency, and reallocating spend to programs that deliver wins in terms of savings and increased revenues. And this is where digital comes into its own. And we need to plan for recovery. We don't need to stress this. If we're forward thinkers and we're moving there, we'll be the ones increasing revenue and reach in the long term after the short term budget costs have happened. We should, not, we should not be cutting out on marketing, but we need to rethink it to make better use of the tools, the reach and the capabilities to connect with our customers. So let us try to, and I'm coming to the end. I think I'm well within my time at the moment, Maggie. What do we need to do to plan for this recovery? As we said, accelerate the use of digital and have an increased use of analytics to direct what you're doing. This means looking at data that you actually have, looking at the data that you can get from your systems and using it. Be ready to pivot and capture that early demand. Certain international luxury markets, if that is your market, are already picking up. And other businesses that have developed new offers have found that customers that have gone to them have actually stayed. So it, it is all growth of new market. If you're moving to new models uh, for payments, whether it is a subscription model or a lower, lowering of upfront costs to help manage the outflows at this time, embrace it. Do not do not lower the fees because you are afraid of the competition. Value what you're doing, but work with the customer to actually manage their outflows. Um, as I've mentioned, there is an increased push to try new brands. And a lot of companies have turned to local um, brands to buy or purchase or make use of the service offerings that they would normally have had um, from abroad across borders and they couldn't. What they have found is that the customers going for these brands have stayed with them. And this is um, focusing again on what I've just mentioned in the last few minutes. So we at this stage would strongly advise a revisit of your brand strategy, the offer and what it means to your customers. And aim to be leaders in your field. We are small enough to be agile and to use innovation to think through our capabilities, our processes and our ways of working. From the enhanced ecosystems with collaboration and partnerships to vir virtualization of our offers. And now a few final thoughts before we open up the floor. <clears throat> and I may have just touched on the points that are troubling you. As a SME, one of our competitive advantages is that we can be very agile and we also can build great brand equity because we're, we offer personalized offers and services. These are a few of the priority actions you need to do now without investing too much. Use all the digital tools available to connect with your brand loyalists. That means emailing, using LinkedIn, social media, hosting webinars, engaging, reaching out and being there digitally. Maximize the community-based messaging that you are using to your brand, be transparent, maintain that trust that you have, and ensure that you have a good engagement happening. We all know that times are hard, so don't be afraid to acknowledge it. And there are many new offers on the marketplace that could be encroaching on your market. Be upfront with customers and supply chain. They should stay with you if they have trust in what you're doing and engage beyond that transaction. Once again, digital is there to be used. It is convenient. Use newsletters, connect in networks like we connect and maintain visibility whilst you rethink your strategy and pivot the business. Get your customers and clients involved in your thinking and try to understand what they want from you. Keep the lines of communication open and remember, with digital, you are global. So your markets are beyond your immediate borders. And with that, I think I have just reached 40 minutes, Maggie. So um, I would like to open the floor for any questions or any comments that there are. And I can actually stop sharing so that I can see you. If that's Noreen, you're, you're perfectly on time, Noreen. Thank <laughs> you very much. That was, that was great. And you shared such a lot of different information. I'm going to slightly keep myself on mute a little bit because, as I said earlier, um, there's a bit of drilling going on in my house, which is quite loud. Um, but please, if you have questions to ask Noreen, 
um, please do put them into the chat box. And there's a couple that have come up already. Um, Jay had asked about how do businesses ensure they don't lose the human touch amidst all the um, amidst all the pivoting to digital platforms. So any best advice around yeah not being coming completely anonymized? Yeah, I have touched on this, Jay, and it depends on the business and what you're using. If you are in manufacturing, your clients are within that supply chain, you may be part of it, you may be trying to engage both up and down the supply chain, it's going to be a different engagement than you're using if you have services where most of the businesses um, are people-based. You know, we, within the people-based environments, we've all taken a hit because we all miss that face-to-face -face engagement. And whilst we've all tried to be online in webinars like this, we're also missing out on that face-to-face -face networking that used to happen. We now cannot communicate. So it is important that if you make communications, you actually keep that up. And that could be using LinkedIn, which is actually coming into quite a, its own as the professional toolkit. And you may all have been bombarded by all the cold calling email that's, emails that are coming from LinkedIn. I, I seriously have about 10 dropping into my mailbox every day. Maintain the relevant and important contacts that you want. People are online, we're all digital, find the networks where they are and engage within them. Um, and this is all pertinent to your own individual markets. You, you can't have a broad stroke covering everything because what we may work for somebody say in education where they're looking at a professional environment and they need to be speaking to executives within the larger corporates, uh, somebody who is selling professional services to SMEs would be better off networking within a lot of the leading organizations that have actually also come into their own these last six months and have been doing a lot of online Online support networks and engagement. Jay, I hope that covered it in a bit. I know it probably didn't cover everybody's, but it is hard to put a, a one quick brush stroke over everything. Yes, that's great. Thank you, Noreen. It's always good to hear your great advice. <laughs> Well, it, it is a lot to go through, as I said, yep. because of all the various industries we're looking at. It, it, it's hard, no, but she they are. Thank you. Fantastic. Maggie, do you want to give me an, I, I, there's a lot, so I, I don't. Great advice. <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely. And she said great advice, partly linked to some of the discussion that was going on while we were on the call, which is there are so many different tools out there and what are the best ones to use? And Jan, I think you had referenced something about them needing to pay for licenses and then Bianca that question it's like hard to understand we're good how do you decide and whether maybe you've got any tools you could recommend or maybe even the group has tools that they could maybe re recommend that they've used them there was actually a few comments about payments online that cropped up um yeah yeah um if do you know the chart i shared and this would be one i will share again Oh, Maggie, I think you're breaking up. I can't make that out. This is the tool um, which shows a lot of the um, digital tools which are currently available. Um, and you can see whether there's a lot of them within the SME environment coming from low, or in uh, the low being the pink, orange being medium, and high being the green. What this means is that they, the companies, and we can be talking about the SAPs of this world and all the other larger um, companies that actually look at producing these tools, they are recognizing that a lot of the micro and SMEs need to be able to tap into them as well because of the new hybrid environment we're going in. At the bottom here, and I'm not sure if you can all see them, you have a lot of the tools of which they are quite ubiquitous among the SMEs. You've got um, 
this is a moment where I go cold. You've got Skype, you've got PayPal, you've got QuickBooks for financing, you've got Microsoft Teams, the G Suite, which actually has quite a lot, Microsoft Dynamics, Salesforce, IBM, WorldPay, GoDaddy, and we can add to them Stripe, which is another online payment system. You've got uh, tools for collaboration like Slack, which actually allow you to um, collaborate and can be all incorporated into uh, the WhatsApp, the Gmail, um, and a lot of other applications. You've got Trello, which is another project management tool. These are all tools which we can all tap into, and a lot of them have got applications for SMEs. I know it is a lot. As I said, I will make this available and any bit, any more information I have on them. Be the Business, which is one of the organizations here in the UK which has taken this up, is really pushing hard and working with the larger um, the larger platform developers to make more tools available to the SME community. So what I know, I will pass on to you and I can prepare a list for you, Maggie, so that um, you can see them. And if you haven't used them, I'll be very happy to share the list as well. I'm going to take that off screen again for now and stop sharing. Thank you, Noreen. Hopefully you can hear me a bit better now. Um, I also, Jan has put a comment about all these new tools that keep coming out and like you can then spend so long kind of looking into them and try to work out what works, what doesn't and how you actually make the final decision. So <coughs> certainly everybody, if you've got any advice on yeah. tools you, you've used that you've liked, then definitely share. Jan, I don't know if you want to come off mute and share any of your insight onto some of the tools that you, you I hadn't heard of any of them. You said Kabaji, Teachable, yeah. I don't know anything, but Jan, if you want to share any insight into some of the stuff that you're looking at. Um, how, how long have you got? <laughs> <laughs> we have um, 10 minutes before we're yeah, off. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so I, I've, been, I've been looking at um, going, doing some kind of like online course and selling because I just yeah. launched some courses before I went, before lockdown. Um, and, and then I've got so tied up in knots in looking for the right thing. And a fellow coach has just said, I didn't look, I just went with Kajabi and he's got this beautiful site. And I'm thinking, I've wasted so much time. But <laughs> so there's, a, there's an amazing array of tools for online um, networks and membership sites. So you can create a club and they integrate with payment like Stripe, which is really powerful. Um, and then I thought, oh, I'm going to do it on my website. I can do it. But it, it does kind of get into that realms of now. I, I have been quite technical, but I've now reached my limit. Yeah. And, and it was that great 1950s advert, isn't it? Women know your, <laughs> know your limits. Um, so, so there's loads of online tools. Um, and, and there's a new one that's around, been around about a year called Guru Can, which is from Russia. And it's, it's only been around for a year, but it's got a really low entry. Most of them have got a free entry level, but obviously if you pay something, you get a bit more. And I've got to say, I was really impressed with Guru Can, but it doesn't have lots of added on functionality, but they allow you to, to write um, a course or sell a membership where you can have live coaching or discussions or networks. Um, but do, do beware, there are masses of coaches out there and people running, and I've been signing up for all these free things, partly as a bit of a, I must be able to learn something from everyone, but you end up consuming um, free material and going from one to the other in the get the quest that they will give you the magic something but all yeah. they really want to do is suck you in to their membership and upsell upsell and there is no magic formula you still have to get down and do it yourself so yeah. beware of all these people offering free free this that and the other um, and in terms of the business tools I mean I use free agent rather than some of the more well-known ones it's brilliant but the I, my favorite tool everybody should have is Calendly um, and there's things like VC to which is a more sophisticated version. Calendly is super simple and it's free. And you just put let's talk in your footer and it allows people to book a half hour, one hour meeting with you. And if you upgrade it to the $15, whatever it is a month, you can actually take Stripe payments for calls with you. So that would be my tip would be to get Calendly um, and be aware of getting sucked into consuming free content. I have consumed it all for you. 
<laughs> Jan, I hear you. Thank your you, pain, Jan. Because I've been doing a lot of that myself. And the other thing that's worrying, as you said, they suck you in, they have your email address, and then you find you've got to pay a thousand pounds to actually get anything online before you start even looking at the um, ongoing license fees. So yes, there, there's a lot out there to look and consider. And this is why I've actually said your starting point is map out your customer journey and map out your user journey because you need to find out which parts of your value chain you wish to have automated. Once you understand what it is that you want to put in within that digital realm, then it's easier to say, okay, then this is a better solution than the other. Because otherwise you will end up going through the same painful journey myself and Jan and a lot of others have done. And at the end of it, not be much wiser. You don't need to go out and use every tool. Just as an example, a year and a half ago, I was living on Slack, part of a massive international collaboration. Today, I hardly use it because most of my team doesn't want to go on Slack because we have too, much, too many other applications we're using. So we're adapting and evolving as we carry on our journey. So just to make it slightly clear as well, your user journey is not your customer journey. The user journey is the user flow, which you have in your organization in order to deliver your customer journey. So that means if you have a team that are remotely set up and you're all breaking up the delivery of whatever you're delivering across these, you need to see at which touch points you need to make their life easier. Once you know how you're working, and that could be a better use of CRM system, a better use of messaging, a better use of chat. I mean, a lot of people are using WhatsApp. WhatsApp is very hard to curate, to find any messages. You just end up with tons and tons of groups trying to find out who's bleeped you lost. Probably Slack was a bit better from this point. There are other messaging tools as well. And you have mentioned a few of them, Jan. So it, it would be worth probably putting together a little list. Um, but as I said, this is changing all the time. There's new technology coming out almost every quarter. So it's impossible to know everything that's happening. Understand your user flow, work with your customer journey. That is actually what will add most value to you in your operation, whether you're a one-man team, five-man, 10-man, medium, or a small business. No, Noreen, on that point, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna ask Julie Watling if you're still- Yes, on, please. To, okay. to share some insight, because Julie, Julie's business is an expert in setting up businesses around technology, including you know SMEs, and she's worked with numbers of the businesses in the network, but using maybe some of those more well-known brands like say Teams and SharePoint and things like that. But Julie, would you like to share any insight um, around some of these digital tools and maybe more around the communication side, I think you were mess you were mentioning. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks very much for the opportunity and totally agree with where you're coming from, Noreen. But I think actually um, the digitization of your marketing actually goes hand in hand with the digitization of your basic infrastructure. And yeah. I was so pleased that you talked about the user flow as well as the customer flow. Because, you know, I don't know if you, during this sort of pandemic ring, ring organizations and, and they say, oh, okay, I'll take your number and I'll get somebody to ring you back because they can't transfer calls to people who are, are remote working. So, you know, look at your customer touch points, absolutely. But don't forget the vital one that is when somebody talks to you, you need to be able to transfer it and it all happens seamlessly. Um, and again, it's a bit like, yes, we've got lots of data, we've got lots of analytics, but it's got to be in a place where everybody can access it. So certainly one of the things that we're focused on is putting data um, on SharePoint in places where people can share it. And um, you know, we're using Dynamics CRM, for example. So we're very much, I, I will admit, a Microsoft um, house because we're a Microsoft partner. But actually having everything in the same ecosystem means that it works and you don't have this kind of, well, is that going to work with that? Is that going to backfire on me? And this interacts with that and it doesn't happen. And, you know, you mentioned WhatsApp, for example. Um, WhatsApp, there's no real audit trail. If you start messaging in Teams, it actually is archived. So you can go back and you can find things. So there are lots of great benefits to sort of looking at which, well, how my infrastructure can support my users in the first instance to better support my clients 
and how is it all going to interact and can I manage it and control it, particularly when everybody's remote. And your, your slide, uh, Noreen, which was information and communication, there wasn't any green on there at all. And for me these days, Teams actually is, well, it, it works everywhere and we can manage it for people with, with um, international clients. It's very much a standard that I think is making an enormous difference. People just think of it as meeting software, but it's so much more. Um, you know, it could be your phone system, so you've got it in the same place. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, well, I digress, and I'm sorry, because all your messaging no. was perfect, but I think if you've got the, the basics in place, you can then start to develop your business with the, the refinements that you're talking about. So, I agree entirely with everything you said, Julie. In fact, I think a lot of that I've, I've sort of alluded to it. You cannot start without analyzing what you're doing. That is your basic point. And if you just keep on adding tools without really understanding, you may end up spending money, which then you say, oh, I shouldn't have invested in that. I should have invested in something else. Personally, I am not a great Microsoft team user because I find it, it fails on a lot of issues because of bandwidth. And we have been through a lot of time. So I'm, I won't argue with you on that because we all okay. are, have our keenness <laughs> on using tools. And this is why I said there's also been a big call on governments and this is worldwide not just in the uk to fix the infrastructure because what yeah. you find is where i am in london i i can get online on most of these tools both directly plugged into my um internet my modem or um using wi-fi in other areas that does not go too far just go a couple of miles out of london they struggle to even download anything more than a website, uh, let alone use digital tools. How many calls have we had and people come in and out because, sorry, it's poor bandwidth. So I think these all go hand in hand. And at the moment, we need to work with the availability of what we have. And this is part of our restraints as well, our constraints. So if our yeah. team are located in areas where it's impossible for them to get on and use Wi-Fi, we need to find tools that are better yeah. equipped uh, we've I had with a, having, sorry carry on because this is your area <laughs> okay we've had a number of clients who have had people in difficult areas where they they can't get a landline uh, internet broadband but what we've actually found is that we've got some really good um data only sims that you can use so on the mobile network so if you've got a mobile signal but you haven't got landline access uh, we can put in a router to enable you to do that over a mobile network. And I mean, I'm talking, so let's say about 30 pounds a month for unlimited data on an, on a mobile network. So um, there are other ways of approaching it if, you know, if you're still on ADSL2 or something like that, yeah. and it's going very slowly. Julie, this so is an opportunity so for you to plug it. <laughs> Maggie, can you share her details, please? In, well, <laughs> in, <laughs> indeed. So, ladies, I'm really conscious that we're we're bang on we're bang on the hour. So, I'm I'm going to wrap up and say, and certainly we'll be sharing Noreen's contact details. And, ladies, if you've got any um, things that you want to share, and I'll I'll definitely make sure, Julie, that we share your details as well. And I think we okay. we have I think done in the past around because that that is one of the things that communication solutions can can provide for the network but any other tools if you've tried things as well that you like and that work really well first like jan shared some things that um like the calendly thing that she mentioned so if there's anything like that you think that we should put into the follow-up emails everybody just if you could maybe even just ping jay with the note of it um in the next 24 hours and and in, and in the next 24 hours we'll get this the recording up online and everything and um, but thank you everybody for all of your insight and your comments, lots of different comments on the on the chat and you know please do get in touch with Noreen if you would like to find out more about anything that she shared today or even just want to have a chat with, with her about your customer and your user journey and the difference between them or even things like that. But thank you very much Noreen, this was great as always and thank you to everybody for their, for their input and their comments. Um, Please don't hesitate to get in touch with myself, Emma or Jay, if there's anything that we can help with from a WeConnect perspective. Um, but in the meantime, a big thank you to Noreen for sharing her insight with us all today. So thank you very much. Uh, and I wish you all a brilliant rest of your day. And, and please don't hesitate to get in touch with the team if we can help. Anything. But Noreen, thank, thank you. Thank you all. Thank you very much. And thank you, Maggie. This has been great. You're very welcome. Thank you very much, everybody. Bye. I've got to do the waves because that's all they're doing now. <laughs> <laughs> all good. <laughs> all good indeed. So thank you. Thanks, everyone. And good luck on your digital journey. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>